Yeah. Testing, one, two, three, shoot. Let's do it. Action. Right, do that's, it. What, that's literally what I do before I make every movie. I'm like, testing, one, two, three, shoot. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm here today with Kevin Smith, the half the man that he used to be. Um, in so many ways, in so, in so many ways. Um, Kevin, you were here five years ago. Yes. And uh, Apparently before this room I, existed. I, well, yeah, before I started doing all my potteries up on the second floor. Um, so what do you think? What's your first impression after walking around from the last time? To, to this time. Um, it, number one, it's, it's still overwhelming. It was overwhelming the first time. Hands down, the greatest comic book store in the world. Um, I described it thusly as like, this is where you go where all the horcruxes that make up your soul um, can be found. Uh, because you have pieces of everybody's childhood dating back to like the fucking turn of the century. So it's not just a comic book store. Uh, it, it, when I walked in with Josh, he was like, oh my God, it's like a Comic Con. It's like, yes, it's a 365, 365 day a year Comic Con in this place. Um, you know, it's breathtaking um, to see what you've built, even, even when I came in five years ago. And then coming back to this, and I didn't even know the upstairs existed. Um, yeah, it's over overwhelming here, to say the least. If you've never been, you got to come. It's like, you know, Mecca. One point in your life, you got to come here. Just to be spellbound by the, by the sheer volume of memories. Um, and Chuck, very poetically, was pointing out when we were going through the to the book collection. How many books you got? 300,000. 300,000 books and it, very romantically talking about running his hands down the spine of the books and not in just a tactile like these feel good but that's part of it but then also pointed out that like the people whoever sealed this book may be dead at this point. There's a story behind even that. Never mind cracking the book and reading the story inside. To Chuck the story is before you even crack the book. The story was in the plastic that sealed it. That's, that's a poet's soul right there. So naturally that appeals to me right away. Um, I like to think of myself as a clever businessman until I talk to him and then realize I fucking know nothing. Oh. And it's a chump's game over at Jane's on Bob Seaman's <laughs> stash. Um, this is, uh, if, if I was, you know, what I get a lot in my life is people say, oh man, if I was ever like a filmmaker, this, I'd do it like you. People play me like an avatar, where mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you're doing what I would dream about doing. You are an avatar for me, where I'm like, this is like what I could, what I would dream of doing, of, of like just collecting. Um, and have like, I always thought of my comic book store as a giant collection that people get to pick through. Chuck thinks of his as a giant collection that he doesn't want anybody to fucking touch. The only comic book store retail on the planet who would hang a go away sign if he could. Um, it's, it's incredible, man. But when you think about his business ethos and then you see the volume of material he has and how long he's been in business, there's something to the fuck off, go away approach. <laughs> it it just makes me money. It does. It, it encourages more people to come too because people are like, well, why? Why can't we come? But even something as simple as like, he was talking about, this is the place where you could walk away from a piece of garbage for 20 years, come back and it's gold. And that's the whole theory. That's the, that's the entirety of it. Is is It's almost like the Midas touch where you convert you know, crap into into greatness by simply applying time yes and you and the only thing that you have to have also is space so god it's very much like like when you're dealing with einstein you know it's time and space and 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 merging them together with great collectibles yeah relatively speaking it's not, it's not, <laughs> thank you very much um, how do you find time to indulge all of your passions. For example, downstairs is what feels like miles of a lifelong passion. We're sitting in a room um, that's developed because he didn't want to collect comics anymore because he didn't want to compete with his audience. So here's this amassed collection. Um, and you know, you talked about downstairs, like, oh, there's still this gun I would like to find from my childhood. Uh, that could put off like a uh, hundred caps in one shot or something like that. Yeah. 
it's a, a, a life spent indulging the passions, and that's before you even touch the drag stuff as well. Oh, and I got a farm too. That you don't, that you... I run my farm, yeah, I have So 30. it's not just like, I live on a farm, you have a farm that actually farms. Yeah, I have 32 acres up in Boulder. How do you have all the time, in Boulder? Yeah. So do you go home there every night? I just yeah. went to Boulder to go walk in this morning. Oh my God, I, I love, love Boulder. It. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Great yeah, town, so I own, so nice. I own half a mile of the Longmont Diagonal. So, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I own more land in the city of Boulder than anyone I know. I own a million and a half square feet. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, the big thing I is... I always thought ben, time, ben Affleck was the richest person I know, and I'm really <laughs> starting to rethink all that. <laughs> well, as my wife is so cogent and points out all the time, comic books are not monies, okay? We can't take them to the grocery store, <laughs> okay? You got to sell some. I don't know. You all figured right. out a way to do it somehow to convert it into well, cash. Well, but I'll tell you what, the secret to everything is having the world's greatest group of people who are willing to put up with your madness yes. and to support you and who see what you're trying to accomplish because more than anything this is a memory machine yeah i want to create for all the young people that come in here a sense of joy and a sense of happiness at having been able to visit the world's largest comic book store hopefully not alone hopefully with a parent right. my childhood was shit so what I want is I want the kids of Denver in particular mm -hmm. to, to feel that this place is theirs, yeah. that this is locked in their memory. And we've been here in this location now for over 11 years. So the kids that were coming in here who were six, seven years old, they're going to be graduating from high school real soon. Yeah. And so we've put into their brains these memories because, you know, I, I, Something like this is like a beautiful flower. It only lasts for a period of time, and mm -hmm. then it's gone. And people take things for granted, and they assume that things are going to last forever. They, they don't, but the memories do. Mm -hmm. And so the memories that people have of your great movies and the things that they learned from your movies and, and uh, you know, Dogma. I love Dogma. Oh, my God. Yeah. But ev everybody who learned from your movies will remember you long after you're gone. Mm -hmm. People will, rem will remember close. this place yeah. long after I'm gone. So it's my way of touching eternity, at least for a little bit. And I don't care about the monies. You know, people sometimes think because I charge high prices that it's about the monies. I could give a shit about monies. The only thing I use monies for is to buy more stuff. Yeah. The high prices are to get you to go away. Yeah. Don't buy my stuff, because if you buy my stuff, then I gotta work all the harder to go find it's more. Fine, <laughs> um, you uh, have the soul of a poet, my friend. It's beautiful. Um, you're living your life right. You crack the code and shit. Well, you never wanna stop. When you've got something like this, um, 52 years I've been doing this. And I started off sleeping under bridges, and, and I lived in a car for four months, and I was on food stamps, and I had absolutely no monies, but I always had comics. I was sleeping on my comics in the back of the car, and, and uh, those memories are really good. It sucked. It was cold. I was hungry a lot, but I remember how much joy I had in going to my first comic cons and buying and selling and, and the wonderful people that I got to meet like Jack Kirby and Will Eisner and, and all the great Siegel and Schuster, all the great people that I got to meet. And so how in the hell can that not be a great thing? I mean, you were there for Stan, okay, mm. at the eulogy. Remember that? Yep, yep. I was there in the audience out there, and it was, it was such a, a moving, night. moving experience. Everyone, Stan, everyone Stan, deep did, love in that room. Stan did huge favors for me. When Jack had a stroke in 81, mm. um, I had already planned this huge signing thing. Stan came on five days' notice for free, paid his own airfare, flew out here, took care of me. And you know, there's people who dog on him now and it makes me so angry yeah. because they didn't know the man. Right. The man could be so unbelievably generous and giving. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm just really happy with that. Now you're in, you're in um, Denver and Boulder promoting Clerks 3. Yeah, we have a show tonight. We did a show in Boulder, uh, not last night, the night before tonight. We're in uh, Denver at the Paramount. It's all sold out and stuff. It's like an 1800 seater. So, uh, wow, that yeah, is that is. All out of Lexus. Where um, are you going to next? After this, we go to um, Seattle. Seattle, those are sold out. Then we go to Salem. 
Then we start heading into California, Salem, Oregon. Then we head into California, like San Francisco, um, and then Sacramento, and then San Diego, Los Angeles, Anaheim, and then we head back east again. What's the website where people can go to get your schedule? Clerks3.movie, which apparently is a thing now. Oh, I, didn't, I had no idea. You learn new stuff every day. Okay, you, so you and I are old men, and we thought we figured out the world, and they no, change it every day. No, they change day. it every damn day. It's like trying to post on Facebook. I, half the time, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to post this up um, on Facebook, and we'll also put it on YouTube. But the big thing is, is that um, I want people to be able to go and... Um, meet you if they possibly yeah, can and at the very the least um, get to see Clerks 3 and uh, hopefully it's a huge success for you. So and far so good. Yeah, no I've complaints. heard that. I've heard that it's doing really yeah, well. no complaints. Happy about it. Yeah. Well, uh, it brought me back here. That makes me very happy. I always love to come here. And well, I got to show it off to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got to shut it down. We're going to take a quick picture downstairs for um, all the trans kids out there who are getting oppressed by the world these days. And uh, I'll post that up on Facebook and blast it out all over my trans community. Come on, man. Like, this guy's a living saint, for heaven's sakes. Yes, he's the most avaricious man you'll ever meet in this world. He has everything. But Not yet. <laughs> he's working on having everything. Uh, but he also wants to give everything. For a man who wants to collect it all, you're so very giving. You're a conundrum. Well, you know, we have fun. That's yeah. the main thing, is we're all going to die, so let's have some fun. Oh, shit. You didn't have to bring it there, Chuck. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're all feeling good about life. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm dead serious, you're okay? Going, you, you, stop right. letting the, to stop worrying about the little shit, because yeah. you're going to die. True. Okay, so... If that's a given, you got every minute, every second. Make it, make it count. Do something that's important. Do something that's worthwhile. Don't fuck around. There's, there, we got Life is a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you got through your troubles. Thank you for that. Well, I mean, you know, life is a series of troubles. If you look at it that way, I don't. I'm with you. Life is joy. Do everything we can to create joy because at the end of the day, it's the only reason to live. Mm, two paths in life, kids. There's destruction and creation. Choose the latter. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Thank you. Always Let's go downstairs, shoot a Let's picture, do and get you on the road.